What's up guys, Evil Deer here. So today I'm not going to be making a World of Warcraft slash Esperanto lesson simply because it's so freaking late here. I've been out all day partying and you know doing all that stuff. I haven't been really partying. I've just made that up to make myself sound cool. But yeah, like I've just had a hell of a day. So I thought instead I'll just make this random little vlog because it's honestly it's been a while since I've just sat down and spoke to you guys. Like when was the last time when I made that one about the random dream I had? That probably wasn't the best conversation ever. But anyway, so I just wanted to speak to you about something I've noticed since I've started making these World of Warcraft slash Esperanto lessons. Now, they have been a big hit in my eyes. They're a big hit because, like, before I started making them, I was just making, like, random little vlogs. And, you know, I'd get, like, 30 hits maybe, and I'd be like, oh, my God, 30 people watched my video. And then I made these, and, like, some of them are crossing almost the 500 mark. Like, they're, they're getting close. And it's like, whoa, there is a lot of people who think this is a cool concept, like learning a language while playing a video game and mixing the real world components. You know what, oh, in-game components, you know what? It, that makes sense, like when I think about it logically now, because when I started, I just thought, you know, I wanted to mix maybe, you know, the Pimsel method with the Rosetta Stone method with, you know, some traditional study methods. Like, I just wanted to try all the things that I thought would be cool for me to learn, and apparently you guys like it as well. Now, obviously, I'm not like a linguist or anything. I'm not even a language teacher, like not a professional one. I just... I just speak this language and I teach it, so every now and then I make mistakes as well. Um, I did in a couple of videos, like I might mispronounce stuff a little bit every now and then. But hey, you know what? There's no professional Esperanto teachers out here, so I figured I'll teach you guys. If I make a mistake with time, you'll pick up on it anyway, because like honestly, once you get into the language, you'll start spotting these things anyway, and just point it out. But the real reason I wanted to create this vlog, apart from that, is as I started playing these games, I thought, hey, you know what? It'd be cool if I started playing some Esperanto games while teaching the language. And you know what? There is nothing out there in Esperanto. There's literally maybe, I could count the amount of games I've seen in Esperanto on freaking one hand. And yeah, like, what's going on there? Like, I don't get it. We've got hundreds of thousands of books. We've got more learning books than I can possibly imagine. Every second Esperanto I met, I swear to God, is a programmer. So why? Why on earth don't we have more Esperanto games? What are you programmers doing out there? Start making some Esperanto games, like I swear. I've gone on to like the game making forums because back in the day I did program a bit. I don't really do it much anymore. And I'll see this guy and he'll post up this game. It looks freaking epic. It's like the best game ever. And you click on it and it's had like 30 downloads over a year. And I'm thinking, you know what? If that guy translated his game to Esperanto, I swear to God, he would probably have a couple of hundred hits within the first week. The reason being is because there is so limited games. So like, there's so little amount of games in Esperanto. If you make a game in Esperanto, everyone's gonna be like, Wow, cool, let's go play it. It was like me when I heard about What the Shell. I just had to hunt it down. I jumped through loops to play that freaking game. And you know what, if it was any other app game in the world, I would have just scrolled past it because there's a million app games out there. I'm not saying it's a bad game. They're all good games. They're all very good, done, like very well done. But the thing is, it's just saturated. In the English market, there's hundreds of thousands of games like on the app store and stuff like that and it's just like scroll 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 what do i want to do there's so much choice i can't even be bothered choosing any more clothes but in the esperanto community you told me about an esperanto game i will jump through hoops to find that game and play it purely because it's an esperanto there's there's hardly any games out there so if you're like a game programmer or something or not even a game programmer just a programmer and you want to get like your name out there, make some games in Esperanto, and I swear to God, I will play it. I'll play it. If it's the worst game in the world, I'll play it. If it's, like, a little bit better than the worst game in the world, I may even record it and play it on this channel with my, you know, my, it's not a very big audience, I got like 250, but then again, it has been growing quite well. So, you you know, you would get so much promotion within the Esperanto community, it's, it's crazy. Like, if you are a programmer, then program games in Esperanto. It doesn't make sense. The market is massive. And there's so many, like, I looked at the demographics on my channel the other day. The majority of people are below the age of 30 okay on YouTube the majority of my viewers that means there is like 250 plus people who are below like the age of 30 and are learning Esperanto what does that say about the future of this language 
it is massively growing. It has to be if there's so many young people watching my channel. And my channel has been growing at a phenomenal rate. Like I'm friends with other YouTubers. Some of them have got like thousands of followers and stuff like that. That's how I got into this whole YouTube thing. And they're like, dude, why is your channel growing so fast? You're clocking like four plus subscribers a day. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I just make random videos. And they're like, dude, I spend like 10, 20 hours on my video and I get one subscriber like every now and then. How do you do this? And I'm like, dude, I swear to God, I don't know. I guess it's because there's so many Esperantists out there and there's just hardly any videos. There's hardly any games. So th there's a massive market and just, it's untapped. Like, it's just not touched. And when I say market, it's not like something where you're gonna make like tons of money. I mean market as in get your name out there type of thing. So yeah, that was just the random thing I wanted to speak about today. Like, what are your thoughts on this? Like, if you're a programmer, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Why haven't you done anything in Esperanto? Like, it, you, maybe you have and you, I just haven't seen it. Maybe that's another issue. Maybe our promotion of the game and slash film industry in Esperanto is just so bad that we just don't know about each other's products. So let me know if you have made a game in Esperanto, put it down in the comments. I swear to God, I will check it out. I will check it out. I'll make it my mission. So yeah, let me know your thoughts. If you've liked this, give it a like. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not there, well, I'll hunt you down in World of Warcraft, kill you and camp your body. <laughs>